Okay, well, thank you very much for inviting me here today. Um, just for all of you that are not perhaps familiar with the, with the European Banking Federation, um, we represent uh, around 4,500 banks, um, small and large banks around, around Europe um, here in Brussels. Um, so banks have certainly been very active on, uh, on, the, on the blockchain since the beginning of, of this story. And uh, uh, blockchain seems to be, so every day you can see a, a news about blockchain on, 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 uh, on the newspapers, like everybody talks about it. And I have the impression that sometimes there is a bit of confusion about uh, many things. It seems a bit now as a magic box that can solve a lot of the problems that are present on the, on the, um, on hurt. But uh, somehow I would like to, to, to frame a bit the things that, that for which the blockchain can be of relevance for the financial services industry. And that's what I'm, I would try to do in, in my um, keynote, uh, keynote address. Uh, so why this can be relevant for, for financial markets? Well, the blockchain developed specifically for Bitcoins, but the concept of distributed ledger is, is certainly not uh, by any means limited to cryptocurrencies or, or payments. So every system that currently um, relies on trusted central authorities uh, for the transfer and recording of asset ownership could uh, theoretically be replaced by a distributed, uh, by a distributed uh, and decentralized system, such as a distributed ledger. So why blockchain is such an attractive uh, uh, concept? Well, basically with the blockchain, you can see who had something, who owns it now. Uh, you have the fact that the parties involved actually committed to each other electronically and signed it um, with cryptology to ensure that it was authorized. So you could see all these things, and more importantly, um, you can you can do it. You can do all these these sort of things uh, digitally. So it, this will all happen in a very short time frame compared compared to the current uh, um, current uh, uh, time allocation that is needed for uh, such type of, of of operations. So one of the first benefits that was um, is very often discussed is transparency. So this brings transparency all over the all over the system. But there are other important points, and one of those was certainly mentioned already by John, and that's about the um, distribution of information. So currently, as the system is, is built, you have multiple information, so multiple, um, multiple set of the same truth, or of the same story. So basically, you will need to reconcile all those informations every time. So one operator will have to reconcile the same information and check the same inform if the information is the same with the other operator. So you have, well, this takes a lot of time, uh, it takes it takes quite a quite a huge effort and a huge amount of, of database information. So one of the things on which certainly a blockchain could help in in the, in the financial system is reconciling information. You will have with a with a blockchain you will have one single set of information which is immediately uh, shared and acknowledged by all the party involved in the in the debate. So this is certainly a big uh, a big step forward. Um, so the information basically will be kept across multiple servers and, and they will all be updated simultaneously. Um, so whatever you, the only thing you will need to know with this system is basically checking the blockchain. So this will reduce cost, make things very uh, much faster and reduce settlement risk for things like payments and, uh, and trading. So what is the thing that I see the financial industry can develop like as a first thing in the, in the near future? So we're talking here about a new technology which will probably take uh, far longer than we expected to be fully um, uh, deployed. Uh, but there are certain things which I believe can be happening in, in the short frame, and I'm talking about two, five years probably. I think first developments can be happening in what is called the permissioner, uh, the permissioned blockchain. So this is basically a closer network of participants where everybody knows each other and allows uh, each other in. The, they, they have an exact, op exact copy of the distributed ledger data. And basically, uh, in a private one, so you just saying you trust everybody which is on the on the network, uh, because you all have agreed to join to join it. So it, information will be immediately uh, shared among them. So only a limited number of people are given access to the to the chain, uh, but you still have the benefit of the decentralization. So no, not any more uh, uh, different copies on uh, uh, on the system. Um, which means identical records are, will be shared and, and security, they will all be um, basically secure because as John was explained before, the system is quite, uh, is quite secure at the moment and the transaction cannot be amended anymore. Now, 
This of course will bring uh, um, several benefits which, uh, which uh, the financial sector is looking at and that will be cutting cost, gaining speed again and get security um, uh, from the process. In a permission ledger in particular you will solve a lot of the uh, problems which have been mentioned over the last months like the uh, problem with the, with, the, with the power needed for doing all of this and, and the scalability. Uh, of course, this all seems very nice, um, and uh, if we say it this way, it looks like uh, uh, amazing, but there are some concerns, and clearly uh, the system as it is um, will still need a lot of, of, uh, of work to be fully, fully workable. So first of all, um, there are significant risk and a number of fundamental questions that will need to be addressed seriously. One of those is the uh, confidentiality, confidentiality as mis and misuse of the information. Mm -hmm. So it is true that the system is fully transparent, but I'm not entirely sure that the information which uh, will be available to everybody then uh, could, be could be potentially misused. And that's one of the uh, first problems that from which we, we could be worried. Then, of course, there is the problem of cyber security. Um, we said several times that the blockchain is, is, of course, very secure, very difficult to be hacked. Uh, is, this actually, is this actually true? Will this actually be possible? Yeah. Everything can be hacked nowadays, so this is one of, of the issues, together with the capacity and the resource of, of a continuously um, growing network. So the more the network will be growing, the more power will be needed, the more difficult this will be uh, to be managed. Um, and that here we are talking only about uh, a system which will be used for, for record keeping. So if we move to another aspect, which is the one that was mentioned uh, several times, where trading of security, so transferring of security from one place to the <coughs> other, well, there the problems will be even more. Like uh, um, Visa at the moment, we were discussing it before, transacted 47 million transactions per second. So getting there with the new technology will be quite, uh, will be quite, uh, quite challenging. Um, now, uh, there are also other issues uh, very important on the, on the regulatory side. And that's here where, uh, where we also, as EBF, we are, doing, we are already starting doing some, uh, some concrete, concrete work. So, Given the substantial efforts made over the, last, uh, over the past years to make the existing financial system more resilient and, and more stable, um, I see it very challenging for regulators to, be, to now uh, face and, and deal with, with blockchain. You know, it comes out of the blue and it basically the blockchain tells us, oh, we don't need any more central, uh, central authority. So, I mean, I think this would be a kind of, of big challenge that, that they will have to deal, uh, to deal with this. Mm -hmm. um, so, I think that uh, I firmly believe that uh, we should uh, not stifle innovation as it is uh, with preemptive regulation. It is too early and the technology is too premature. That's, that's, that's clear at the moment. However, at the same time, I understand the, uh, the fact that we will have to follow the, 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 the developments of this technology and we will have to ac probably accompany it. So that's why, for example, we very much support the idea which was mentioned yesterday in the parliament by uh, Mr. Weinsager and then also backed by, by Hill of creating this task force at commission, uh, at commission level. Certainly we hope that this will be an open, uh, an open uh, uh, task force where the industry will be able to participate, as is happening now in several aspects at, the commi at commission level, where we can actually contribute to the debate and really, um, and really understand if there is a need of, uh, of, of regulation and, and where we can intervene. There are certainly aspects that we will need to look at if we want the technology to, fully, to be fully deployed from a regulatory side, regulation or things which perhaps will block and prevent the developments of this regulation. Then another important aspect is to understand if we want national uh, regulation to, be, to, to start developing instead of having a European one. That's another debate and another question that I'll to uh, for, later, for later discussion. Then my conclusion, my closing remarks, just so, it, is blockchain the panacea that we are all uh, uh, looking at for solving all our needs? Well, I think, I think the straight answer is no, certainly not. Um, but it can be an important factor for the development of the financial, uh, financial services industry in the coming years. And I believe that the best way to address this, uh, uh, this technology is perhaps identifying the problem that we want the blockchain to solve. And then, once we have found this, using the technology developing is the, no the technology and making sure that this can be actually applied to these systems we want to, these, these problems we want to solve. That's a bit what the banking industry is, is trying to do, I think, and, uh, and uh, certainly we will discuss this uh, more and more over the next uh, months and years.